Hi everyone, welcome to my new video on this topic of uh, projectile motion. So continuing with my previous video wherein we have discussed projectile motion where an object is projected at an angle theta with the horizontal and the velocity of projection was u. Okay. So we have found that uh, if u is the velocity of projection and theta is the angle of projection then this range was u square sin 2 theta by g. Okay, you can write it like this or r equal to u square 2 u square sin theta cos theta by g. Okay, and we have also proved that if velocity of projection is same and angle of projection is theta and 90 degree minus theta, so for this u angle of projection is theta and for this velocity of projection angle of projection is 90 degree minus theta. So it follows two different trajectories. One is in yellow color, the other one is in white color. It follows two trajectories, but the range is same. The horizontal range is same. The heights are different. Obviously the heights will be different. Okay. So we have proved that this horizontal range is same for angle theta and 90 degree minus theta. Complementary angles horizontal range is same. Achha. What about the height? Now h1 is the height, maximum height when angle of projection is theta. So we have already derived the expression for height and it is h1 is equal to u square sin square theta by twice g. Okay. This is the height when angle of projection is theta. Now when angle of projection is 90 degree minus theta the height h2 it will be equal to u square sin square 90 degree minus theta divided by twice g because now the angle of projection is 90 degree minus theta sin 90 minus theta is cos theta so this is u square cos square theta by twice g okay so now we have the expression for h1 and h2 okay so if you divide h1 and h2 what do you get h1 by h2 it is equal to see this u square twice g term gets cancelled here we have sin square theta this is cos square theta so sin square theta sin square theta by cos square theta so this is equal to tan square theta okay so this is one relation between h1 and h2 h1 by h2 it is equal to tan square theta okay now if you add h1 and h2 what will you get h1 plus h2 it will be u square by twice g this common sin square theta plus cos square theta sin square theta plus cos square theta that is equal to 1 so h1 is another relation h1 plus h2 it is equal to u square by twice g u square by twice g okay now if you multiply h1 and h2 then also you will get an interesting result h1 into h2 it is equal to u square sin square theta u square cos square theta 2g into 2g so 2g square okay so if you rearrange these terms you will see that this can be rearranged and it can be expressed as r square by 16 this entire expression where r is this term where r is this term okay so from this we have uh, h1 into h2 is equal to r square by 16 so this is another relation or you can write r is equal to 4 times square root of h1 h2 okay so these are 1 2 3 4 these two are same relations so these are four expressions uh, relation between h1 and h2 based on this result okay so questions may be asked uh, based on any of these relations okay I'm not teaching this from point of view of questions, but from point of view of a 
beautiful observation okay i hope these things are clear to you next let us see the relation between the time periods for the two paths these two trajectories for angle of projection theta 90 degree by theta see velocity of projection is same for both cases okay that is the essential condition so for uh, this angle of projection theta i will write p1 is equal to 2u sin theta by g this is the time of flight when angle of projection is theta when angle of projection is 90 degree by theta we have t2 is equal to 2u sin 90 degree minus theta divided by g okay so sin 90 minus theta that so that is angle of projection is 90 degree minus theta so sin 90 minus theta is cos theta so i can replace this with cos theta okay so if you divide these two expressions what do you get t1 by t2 is equal to sin theta by cos theta so that is tan theta okay so t1 plus t1 by t2 is equal to tan theta now if you uh, multiply these two expressions t1 into t2 it will be uh, 4u square sin theta cos theta by g square Achha. now we know that range it is twice u square sin theta cos theta by g so if you make that substitution over here you get this as twice r by g so t1 into t2 is equal to twice r by g so this is another relation between t1 and t2 Achha. now let us proceed further see equation of trajectory equation of trajectory we have written the equation of trajectory as uh, y is equal to x tan theta minus g x square divided by 2 u square cos square theta okay now let us transform this equation in uh, one more uh, form uh, wherein we can write this as say y is equal to x if I take x common here so this equation so this is a beautiful equation but we can beautify this equation further by writing this as y is equal to x tan theta 1 minus, I have taken x tan theta common, so this is gx divided by 2u square cos square theta tan theta. Okay, uh, so x is gone here, tan theta is here, so I have written tan theta. Okay, now this is y is equal to x tan theta 1 minus xy. If I take this g below this expression 2u square cos square theta tan theta is sin theta by cos theta so one this is this is sin theta by cos theta so this cos square theta so this gets cancels out so 2u square cos theta sin theta by g okay but what is this isn't this r the horizontal range so i can write this as y is equal to x tan theta 1 minus x by r okay so this is another interesting form for writing the equation of trajectory okay so why i have written like this like in certain cases you can use this to find the range directly how because see uh, this is the uh, horizontal direction this is x axis this is y axis this is origin 0 comma 0 so the projectile is projected with velocity u at angle theta it goes like this okay so this point is r comma 0 so this distance is r this is the horizontal range 
So that means for this point and this point, the x coordinate is how much? X coordinate is 0. And for this, y coordinate is 0. For this, for this point, for this location and this location, y coordinate is 0. And x coordinate is 0 and r. So if you substitute y equal to 0, from here you get one solution x equal to 0, this term. And from this you get 1 minus x by r is equal to 0 or x equal to r. What is this? This is a range. This is x equal to r. This is x equal to r and y equal to 0. Okay. So you can use this equation to solve or to find the range. Okay. Like if some equation is given like this, y is equal to x uh, uh, tan 60 degree or x root 3, 1 minus x by 4. Okay. And they ask you what is the range. So obviously in this case, range will be equal to how much? Range will be equal to, if everything is in meter, range will be equal to 4 meter. Okay. So this term represents range provided this trajectory equation is written in this form. Okay. Achha, now, one more interesting concept. See, uh, when a project time is projected, suppose this projected with velocity u, it goes like this. So, this is the trajectory. So, at two locations, it will have same vertical displacement y at once during ascent while going upward and while going downward it will cross the same vertical height twice isn't it so suppose we have uh, two posts or two poles okay of equal height and this Projectile is projected such that it just crosses the two post, just over the post. So this is one post, or this is one pole, this is another electric pole, and this projectile is projected such that it crosses these two poles at time t1 and t2. Okay. So what can you say about the time period? It crosses the first pole at time t1, it crosses the second pole at time t2. Just crosses. Okay. So, what is the total time period or time of flight? So, see, along vertical direction, we have written the equation y along vertical direction y is equal to u sin theta into t minus half gt square. If uh, u is the velocity of projection, this angle is theta. So, this component will be horizontal component will be u cos theta and vertical component will be u sin theta. So we are considering the displacement along vertical direction. So I have considered the velocity also along the vertical direction. Okay. So this equation we have also written previously. Now this is a quadratic equation. Okay. So I can write this equation as a half gt square minus u sin theta into t plus y is equal to 0. Why is this height? So this is a quadratic equation, okay, representing this curve because from this equation we have derived the equation of trajectory. Since it is a quadratic equation that means it will have two solutions for t and what are those solutions t1 and t2 because this equation represents this curve. So these two points are on this curve and this equation is representing the curve so that means these two points are the solution of this equation so if, what is the formula for sum of the roots this is a quadratic equation of the form ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0 ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0 and sum of the roots Sum of roots, the formula for sum of the roots is minus b by a. Sum of the roots is minus b by a. So minus b means minus u sin theta. So, so minus minus u sin theta by a. A means 
g by 2 g by 2 so this minus minus becomes plus this 2 goes here this is 2u sin theta by g 2u sin theta by g what is 2u sin theta by g time period time period is 2u sin theta by g so that means t1 plus t2 is equal to t t1 plus t2 is equal to t okay so that means there are two times at which the projectile will have same vertical displacement. There are two times at which the projectile will have same vertical displacement. And the sum of these two times is equal to the total time of flight. Okay. So let me write it over here. For two times a projectile, a projectile will have will have same vertical displacement displacement and the sum of these two times these two times is always equal to always equal to time of is equal to time of flight. Achha. Now, see, uh, this is x axis, this is y axis. Projectile is projected like this with initial velocity u. It goes like this. Okay. So at this point, the velocity of projection is u, angle of projection is theta. Okay, and uh, this is horizontal component of velocity ux is equal to u cos theta. This is equal to this vertical component of velocity, initial velocity ui. So that is equal to u sin theta. Okay, so we know the velocity at this particular point, and this is the trajectory. But suppose at some arbitrary point, if you are asked to find the velocity, okay, so velocity at a particular instant. Now we have studied in uh, this motion in one dimension that velocity at a particular instant it has a particular name. What is it called? Instantaneous velocity. Okay. Instantaneous velocity. Instantaneous velocity. Instantaneous velocity. That is velocity at a particular instant. Velocity at a particular instant particular instant so suppose at this point we have to find the velocity okay just remember one thing that for the trajectory this is the trajectory so at any point on the trajectory if you draw a tangent the direction of the tangent will give you the direction of velocity okay so at any point, if you want to find the direction of velocity, at any point on the trajectory, if you want to find the direction of velocity, draw a tangent. Okay. So if this point I have to find the direction of velocity, I will draw a tangent. So this is the tangent. So this is the direction of velocity. Okay. Suppose this is the horizontal direction, this angle is alpha. So this is Vx, this is V1. Okay. Now, Along horizontal direction, there is no acceleration. So, what can you say about the velocity along horizontal direction? Along horizontal direction, acceleration is zero. Ax, Ax is equal to zero. That means there is no acceleration. If there is no acceleration, that means velocity will be constant. So, Vx is equal to ux plus ax into t. Final velocity along x-axis, that is this velocity. Initial velocity along x-axis, that is this velocity. Plus acceleration along x-axis into time. Okay. So this is vx is equal to u cos theta. vx equal to u cos theta. Okay. So at any point, at any point, 
along the horizontal direction, velocity it is going to stay as u cos theta because acceleration along x axis is zero. Okay. Now how about along vertical direction? Along vertical direction. That is Vy. So, see acceleration along y axis is minus g. Acceleration along y axis is minus g because it is in the downward direction. Upward direction we are taking as positive, downward direction is negative. So, vy is equal to uy plus ay into t. Final velocity along y axis is equal to initial velocity along y axis plus acceleration along y axis into time ok so if I substitute this so vy is equal to u sin theta minus gt ok so that means the magnitude of this velocity v it will be equal to vx square plus vy square this is the magnitude of velocity magnitude of velocity magnitude okay so this is v is equal to square root of u u cos theta square plus u sin theta minus gt square vx is u cos theta vy is u sin theta minus gt so this is the magnitude expression for magnitude but velocity is a vector quantity so we also need to find the direction. So direction is given by this angle alpha. So direction, direction of velocity, direction of velocity. Okay. So that will be tan alpha. Tan alpha equal to perpendicular by this. Perpendicular means if I shift this vector over here, this is v y by v x tan of i equal to vy by vx if i shift this vector parallel to itself okay so what is vy this is u sin theta minus gt divided by u cos theta okay so this is the expression for direction of velocity from this we can find the value of alpha alpha is the direction tan alpha is not the direction alpha is the direction but from this expression we can find the value of alpha okay so this is how you can calculate the instantaneous velocity okay why i'm saying that i am having that information about instantaneous velocity because see instantaneous velocity means this velocity this quantity i know the magnitude i know the direction that means i know the velocity because velocity is magnitude and direction it is a vector quantity so i have complete information so this is how you can calculate the instantaneous velocity for projectile motion. So let us summarize the things which we have learned like uh, for two dimensional projectile motion that is angular projection or inclined projection. This is the velocity of projection, this is angular projection, this is the trajectory, this is the height this is the range okay now expression for height is u square sin square theta by twice g this is the expression for height expression for time of flight is 2u sin theta by g okay so this is time of flight that means time of ascent will be half of this time of descent will also be half of this time of ascent is equal to time of descent time of ascent plus time of descent is equal to time of flight okay now the range horizontal range it is equal to 2u square sin theta cos theta by g or i can write this u square sin 2 theta by g okay so this is the expression for range from this we have r max is equal to u square by g at theta is equal to 
45 degree. Okay, this is the condition for maximum range. We have also seen that range is equal for complementary angles. So R theta is equal to R 90 degree minus theta. Okay, we have also seen that for this condition, for this angle of projection theta and 90 degree minus theta, for this height is H2, for this height is H1, that is for angle theta, height is H1, for 90 degree minus theta, height is H2. H1 plus H2, it is equal to U square by twice G and H1 into H2 is equal to R square by 16. Okay, and uh, uh, don't forget the equation for trajectory, y is equal to x and theta minus gx square divided by 2u square cos square theta, or I can write y is equal to x tan theta 1 minus x divided by r, where r is the horizontal range. Okay, so at least these formulae you should know when you are solving questions related to projectile motion. Okay. So next we have an interesting question. A particle is projected with velocity 40 meter per second, making an angle of 60 degree with the horizontal. Find the time taken. Find the time taken for the particle to make angle 45 degree with the horizontal. Okay. First, let us understand the meaning of this question. Okay. Question is easy, but first let us understand the meaning. Okay. So, this is the horizontal direction, this is the vertical direction. Okay. So, the projectile is projected with velocity 40 meter per second, making an angle 60 degree with the horizontal. So, that means this velocity is 40 meter per second, this angle is 60 degree. Okay. So, the projectile moves like this. Okay, so at this point, the angle is 60 degree. At suppose this point, this angle becomes 45 degree. So the velocity makes an angle 45 degree with the horizontal. See, as the projectile goes up, the angle decreases. So find the time taken for the particle to make angle 45 degree with the horizontal. Means you have to find the time taken to travel from this point to this point. Okay. Now, if you uh, try to recollect the formula which we have studied, then uh, you will not find a direct formula because we don't have a formula uh, to find the time taken to travel from this point to this point. Okay. But if you go into the basic concepts, you will see that, see if this is V, this is 45 degree, this is Vx, this will be Vy, but if this angle is 45 degree, tan 45 degree it will be equal to perpendicular by base so perpendicular means if I can shift this vector over here so it will be tan 45 degree will be equal to Vy by Vx tan 45 degree is 1 so that means Vy equal to Vx okay but what is Vx we know this is 40 degree 40 meter per second this is 60 degree so this is 40 cos 60 degree so this is your ux and ux it is also equal to vx ux is equal to vx because horizontal velocity doesn't change acceleration along horizontal direction is zero so horizontal velocity is a constant vy equal to vx what is vy vy it is equal to uy minus gt isn't it dy is equal to uy plus ayt so dy is equal to uy minus gt because ay is equal to minus gt this is a fundamental concept because acceleration is in the downward direction anything in the downward direction in this convention what we are doing anything which is in the upward direction we are taking it as positive anything which is in the downward direction we are taking it as negative acceleration is in the downward direction negative so, making the substitution over here, so this is 
40 sin 60 degree. So this is 40 sin 60 degree minus g into t is equal to 40 cos 60 degree. These two quantities are equal. So that means these two quantities are equal. Okay. So that is 40 sin 60 degree minus cos 60 degree divided by g is equal to t. Okay. So all these quantities are known. We need to find the value of t. So if you make this substitution, you can get the value of t. So if you simplify this, you will get t is equal to 1.5 same okay so this is how you have to solve this question okay i hope this concept is clear to you